Well, hey, EVTV, it's Friday, and this is your EVTV Amsterdam update. I'm sitting here in the 1969 CJ5 Jeep that is going for road legal testing next Monday. You heard it, folks. It's Friday. We're going there Monday. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> we ain't driving yet. Um, not to worry. Uh, that's our job. <laughs> We're going to be working against the deadline, and uh, that means pulling... Uh, all weekend and all-nighters if we have to. We do finally have all the components and stuff that we need. It's uh, the main components we had, of course, being the EVTV Amsterdam warehouse. But it's all that good stuff, that last-minute stuff that you find out that you need when you're um, making cooling tubes and having them go around corners, um, having shielded cables, but finding out you also need to have sheaths for the shielded cables and have them orange, not red, mind you, so you can't buy them from the gas company that has these red shields. Uh, red shielding tubing, um, but you have to finally source uh, this this orange stuff that we uh, managed to find and uh, can now be using for all our throughputs. So uh, I'll take you around some of the stuff we're doing in the Jeep, uh, show you some pictures while I'm talking about it. Uh, charger has been mounted, cooling system has been connected. 12 volt system was an absolute nightmare. Our customer bought a car that had been started, but hadn't nearly been finished. Uh, but then again, you know, uh, we always relish a challenge here in Amsterdam. Uh, so that is our uh, Jeep, and uh, we have uh, Celso Francisco and uh, Ray working hard on that count. Uh, me running around Amsterdam getting all the last parts that we needed. But I think she'll be a Real screamer, people. We got a 100, 100 amp hour Calb cells in here. Uh, so she'll have a full 33 kilowatt hour pack. And uh, with these big dune buggy tires, she should be doing fine in a sandbox and, you know, actually getting somewhere on the highway at about, you know, 80 or 90 kilometers an hour. So uh, next week, I hope to be all smiles and congratulatory self-pat on the backs for a fully road legal CJ5 Jeep. If not, I'll be all cries and uh, slide softly onto my sword and let you know that it didn't work out. But that's next week. Uh, what else did we do this week? Well, last week we told you a little bit about the Delta and the problems we were having with the da 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 da. It actually made the front page of the EVTV Friday show, me and Celso looking mm, slightly nonplussed at <laughs> the feeling of 100 kilowatts going through the seat of your pants. Well, I'm not moving the throttle. So what was that about? Well, so we did hook up the uh, PC to both of the controllers, uh, the Curtis controllers this time, and we found a whole shopping list of errors. Uh, not all of them throttle related. Some were uh, low key switch voltage, some were uh, over temp warnings. Um, in fact, these Curtis controllers, they do a great job of logging errors and then after a power cycle you get to go on. Um, but they don't log any kind of date or time or duration for these errors. And I just simply never gone into the error file. So that means from the start of the installation of the Delta, well over a year ago, these babies had been logging errors and dutifully writing them away to their little log file and I'd never really checked them. So checking them now after you first encounter a problem is going to give you a shopping list, but it's not going to pinpoint that one item that you're throwing, if you're throwing any, related to the problem that we had. So that means once they were cleared, we uh, now took out the um, logging capability, you know, the, the serial wire out to the front so that we could hook up a laptop while we were in the boat and not just to the master controller, but to the slave as well. So this last weekend saw me and Cels back out in the Delta trying to recreate that error and let's see if that worked out. Against, yeah.
saved. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now, let's do the other connect one. Connect the other one. So that was the slave connected. Now we connect to the master. Further. Bad. Motherfucker. It's the weak plug. Okay, so this one goes there. And the little guy. Yeah, it's that. Oh, I'm on it already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You're yeah. trying to connect the yeah. master to the yeah. slave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. I want the master to go to the slave. Bring connect. out the game. Come on. Connect. Okay, I'm connected. Let me check for errors. Uh, throttle wiper high. Okay. Um, throttle high. Okay. So monitor. And all. Not 250 seconds. Okay, let's start. Master. Okay, yeah. we can go. Okay. Same throttle wiper high, yeah. uh, but this can be uh, when you initiate the controllers. Yeah. It says the throttle is high. Yeah. So you want to save the error, clear so them. I can. Top. Oh, you can see if it comes back again. I guess. Yeah. No, if it uh, appears another error. Yeah. Just You'll see it. Yeah. yeah. No, I just thought if we clear throttle wiper high, then we know it's not an on-off event. Okay. Yeah, I just deleted the whole history, yeah. so okay. you can check. And are we running log again? Uh, no. We we stop start. Monitor. Okay, start again. Master. Second. Okay, save. Okay. Running another file. Can it do this thing without throwing a fault? Then we yeah, already no have fault. no fault, or no fault, huh? No eh? Okay, so now we know. Even without throwing a fault, it can uh, show this. Yeah, it just stopped. That's fine. I'm turning it off.
Well, there we see. Um, having a battery connected doesn't really make a difference. Um, and we saw that we can get this uh, problem without it throwing a fault, because we deleted the faults and uh, it still definitely showed the behavior. So, uh, we'll take a look at the logs and uh, start looking at some new software. <laughs> So as you can see, no problem recreating that error. Uh, when we were out there, it did throw one uh, a fault, which was throttle wiper high, but that seemed to be more uh, just at the, uh, the turning on and off of the controller. Uh, we were able to, in fact, reproduce the <laughs> error without um, uh, throwing any errors on either the master or the slave controller. At the same time, we were running logs, and this time we were running logs at 250 milliseconds instead of 1,000 milliseconds being once every second. So doing it once every 250 milliseconds gave us a much finer resolution and gives us more uh, um, vision, uh, uh, more uh, confirmation of what's happening on this throttle, which I've managed to print in this graph that Celso made for me, as I am crap with graphs in Excel environments. Well, here we can clearly see that, I mean, I was really trying to go slow on the throttle pot so that any variation wouldn't be me with the joystick, but it would in fact be something that was coming autonomously out of that throttle or in the connections up in the back of the boat. Well, uh, I'll put up this graph for you, but then in a larger, more colorful version. And you can indeed see that I put up the throttle to uh, um, a map throttle of about 50%, and uh, that's at about 3.5 volt. Then I come back a little bit to get into steady planing. And without me touching anything for several seconds, both uh, the throttle input shows a couple of dips, the map throttle and throttle command goes all, all, all over the place, and then uh, we've got actually a spike up. Now, these are the most dangerous folks. We've got a spike up on the throttle input that I never did within a second, and it actually spikes up the map throttle uh, up to 100%. So that means you're minding your own business in your experimental speedboat and suddenly you've got 100% of throttle. 100% of throttle means 100 kilowatts of power that you were not requesting. So let's hope we weren't aiming for the shore at that time. In fact, we weren't. There were a lot of jet skis around. I wouldn't have minded hitting one of those. <laughs> those annoying little buzz flies. But um, no, we got back to the um, side and back to the trailer and onto the trailer with our new winch hook uh, without any mishap. But um, we've more or less uh, definitively proven that we have a defective throttle unit. So that pretty much proves that we had a defective throttle. And uh, we'll be taking it out, replacing it, putting in a new one, opening up the unit we had and checking for corrosion or bad connections. Uh, basically, I'm going to now map it while it's on the bench and not mount it in my boat uh, ready to kill me. You know, so we'll see, you know, I mean, you can't save any money on this stuff, guys. Wiring, throttles, they're <laughs> important, and they'll kill you if uh, they don't work. So, lesson learned on that one. I'm in the market for a wigwag throttle that isn't meant for forklifts or anything dry, but I'm looking for one that's fully IP6X and uh, a little more beefy. Thank you very much. Um, the last little update that we have for this week, I mentioned last week that we had contact with Mr. Green and they had some projects in store for us. Well, this week we picked up a not single, but dual Chademo charging station. That means that I now have a mess <laughs> in the back of my tiny little shop. We really need to move. Um, but it was all worth it because I now have a couple of different plates on uh, pieces of equipment. And those plates say things like 50 kilowatt and 100 kilowatt. And, uh, you know, a nerd like me just gets really happy to uh, see that kind of spec on anything, including that gigantic AC wire. Um, that, you know, we'll hook it up to see if we can get it all working, but then what we're in fact looking to do, uh, as Jack said on last week's and this week's blog, is to pass, bypass the whole AC stage uh, um, and then go straight to a DC bus, which will then feed our Chedimo unit. That's going to be very exciting. We at least have the hardware in-house. Next week, Tuesday, we'll have the end point with the Chedimo um, protocol and uh, plugs, and uh, we'll be able to start playing with that. But first, we got to finish the Jeep. What was that last little thing I was going to show you? Oh, yeah, I've got a Tazari Zero sitting outside in the rain. This cute little car is a lot nicer looking to my mind than the Smarts 
Um, and uh, there's 15 or 20 of them sitting in the warehouse with their battery murdering system, having uh, incapacitated almost all of them. This one still drives around, but it'll leave you stranded after about 60 kilometers, and uh, that's, well, half short of what it's supposed to do. If we do get this Jeep finished, then by next week, uh, we should make a project of uh, dismantling the 2460 amp hour ThunderSky batteries that are in there, um, doing them a bit of a check on state of charge, on capacity, on voltages, etc., and uh, seeing if we can't offer the client a way of getting these cars back out on the road um, without a murdering system and just watching what we're doing. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, we have a lot of building to do this weekend. Uh, so pray for us or wish us luck or whatever you guys do when you uh, wish well to people that are out there trying to <laughs> build their asses off. And we'll catch you next week. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.